How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about Marvel's Alien number three. This is the uh, the newest issue if you're watching at the time of recording. Just came out this week and I'm really glad to, uh, to pick it up. Let's uh, go ahead and look at the cover there first. We get this really nice cover of the uh, the girl there with the alien tail wrapping around um, her neck there. So a, a cool way, you know, you can't just draw an alien on the cover every time. And this is a cool way to, to get a character portrait cover because uh, she's actually a character in the book. Uh, but also give this creepy element to it that, you know, didn't really... Uh, you know, didn't happen exactly like this. Uh, may be something that happens in the future, but a cool, you know, creepy element of that that tail hooking up around her there. I really did like this cover. Very, very dark. Um, moving right along, I'm going to flip to the credits first. And here we have to mention, as I always do, uh, a big thank you to the Alien uh, and Marvel team there for putting a previously on here. These uh, previously ons really do help when you're reading something month to month because after a month you kind of forget what's going on and I'll always praise whenever companies put a previously on there. They really should always be doing that and I really do like that. Um, as with last time, the art, uh, the story rather, is by Philip Kennedy Johnson, the art by Salvador La Roca, and Guru EFX did the colors. Now, above the alien logo, and to the right, as always, there's a little schematic there, and this time the schematic is for the Grant Corporation personal carrier. Uh, the point of origin and the crew component are both unknown on this thing, so a cool a uh, new schematic there. Always glad to have to have more of those more nerd stuff. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, talk a bit about the story. Now that being said, I want to say uh, no major spoilers. I do want to say my piece on a few plot points, and I do want to make sure you guys have a basic understanding as to what this book's about. Uh, but I'll I'll keep it to setup stuff, and I won't do any of the payoff stuff. Uh, but that being said, no major spoilers for this issue, but I will be talking openly about spoilers for the previous issue, so if you haven't read one and two, uh, go ahead and stop right now. But anyway, we open up where we left off last time. The alien has torn his way through one of their guys, and we get a good bit of gore there, uh, where the guy's uh, whole chest cavity got ripped open. And on top of the gore, it's extra disturbing because he is kind of forgetting where he is and he's talking to his mother there. Overall, way more than I thought Marvel would actually have the guts to do. So major props to them for that. These are tie-ins to rated R movies, so you really do have to, uh, to keep the comics rated R or they feel like they're watered down. Now, it's not quite as much gore as Dark Horse had done previously, but Marvel is still uh, proving that they can do more than I thought they would have. Um, so, props to them for that. And hopefully they stay along this path. Um, they continue to fight the alien. I really do love this big, uh, not quite a, a full page splash, but pretty much. Um, and they wind up with probably the, uh, the best possible outcome for that situation is they shoot at the alien till it leaves and only takes the uh, the one guy who is pretty much mortally wounded anyway along with them. They uh, question the scientist, but she doesn't seem to know uh, too terribly much. And after that, we get a bit of a flashback to 20 years ago with uh, Cruz there and all his uh, soldier buddies, and they're investigating the ship, and they think, okay, maybe this is just an autopilot malfunction. Um, there doesn't appear to be anyone here. And then they go to the next room, and we get what I think is a, a really fun introduction, a new uh, species to this uh, series, and that is the uh, Cor Corin uh, Highland Goats. These... Uh, genetically modified goats made by the uh, Wayland yutani Corporation. They're pretty uh, pretty weird and creepy looking. So I was hoping when I first saw these that these would be like some random goats they found on a moon somewhere and it'd be like a new alien species for the alien universe. But um, 
No, just genetically modified from Wayland, because they're up to stuff like that. And we can see um, there's a young Cruz in, in the, that version of Bishop there. And we can see that these goats have these weird markings on their face, these, uh, these line vein type things. And uh, he doesn't think that those are supposed to be there. So that's uh, something interesting. And of course, there's one of them dead with all, with all its uh, guts hanging out of it there. And they're like, oh no, they're, they're eating, they're dead. And is that what was really going on? Well, uh, well we don't exactly know. Um, back to the present. And they find aliens banging on this door trying to, uh, to get in because uh, there's someone in there. They shoo them off and they find that there is a human in there. It's the, uh, the grandpa from the, the beginning bit of issue two. He can't find his granddaughter and he's worried. And of course, there's the, uh, there's the cat there. Always got always to gotta show the cats. But then Cruz looks at him closely and sees, oh no, this guy has that weird line vein pattern thing on his face, just like those goats did in the flashback, but this time he's much more scared of it. So you know, uh, before they show you what happens, that something's going to happen. So pretty cool setup there. And the last bit of the plot that I'll talk about, uh, I feel if I go any farther than this, we're in spoiler territory, uh, but the grandpa gives a warning, she's looking for you. Who, your granddaughter? No, 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 not the granddaughter. The mysterious female alien creature, the one in the dark. So the, I guess, Alpha, this character is uh, confirmed to be aboard the ship now. So we'll get to see her in a later issue. So that's really cool, a good setup, a bit of a warning like, hey, this creature is going to be here wreaking havoc. And I do like when they... Uh, when they give you a bunch of setup and build up, you know, to uh, uh, something that's going to be happening later on. Overall, I, I really did like this issue. Marvel's Alien continues to go steady. Um, a fair bit of gore. I did like that weird veins on the face thing, which I guess is what the Alpha does. Because, you know, each creature, I guess, does something different. It kind of reminded me a bit of Prometheus, where they kept it like Alien, but made different decisions and even though they haven't confirmed whether Alien 3 and 4 are canon, they did in issue 1 confirm that Prometheus is canon by showing the uh, the Cobra face hugger. so I'm wondering how heavy they're going to lean into that. Um, but yeah, I did like Alien but with variation. The goats were creepy yet, you know, they're creepy but they're not supposed to be because it's like, hey, there's just a goat, right? But it's got this weird looking face um, and the lines on the face are a really cool interesting new thing to do and I really did like that idea of you know alien but there's more to it and I didn't cover spoilers there is still a whole nother half of the book and there's new characters and there's twists and stuff and I just I didn't want to spoil any of that but at the end a new character does show up or well you know someone you didn't know was still going to be there and I did like to see this character and knowing that this character is going to be in future issues and we're going to get more of this character is really really fun so a good reveal on the last page there and overall I'm still feeling it I really do like Marvel's Alien um, like I said I was worried when they took it away from Dark Horse but they do seem to be doing more gore and violence than I thought Marvel would be capable of doing. And this story really is interesting. And I am wondering what's happening in the past. What's up with these new aliens. And I, I hope it sticks to landing. I hope it stays good. Um, standard plot arcs for uh, comics are either four issues or six issues. I'm betting this is going to be six issues. So we're, we should be halfway through the first plot arc now. And I really am curious what's going to happen. It really does have me hooked and I really do like it. So if, you're, uh, if you've been reading this book, I'd recommend keep going. I really do like it. And yeah, I <laughs> definitely recommend it. Issue 3, still good, still staying steady. That's, that's cool. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You're really helping the channel out. I'll put a relevant playlist on the bottom if you want to see more, including my reviews for Issue 1 and Issue 2, and I also did a custom sketch cover. Uh, those will be in that playlist. So 
Uh, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.